All right, I'm trying this again. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, great. I got, I was on and then it went away and now I'm back. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, Mary Carol, you ready? All right. All right. I'll call this meeting to order. It is the regularly regular January 2021 meeting of the Fulton County Board of Registration and Elections on January the 15th. I'm Mary Carol Cooney, chairperson, and I'm joined this morning by uh, Vice Chair Vernetta Keith Newridin, Mr. Mark Wingate, Dr. Kathleen Ruth, and Aaron Johnson. I have one announcement to make before we proceed with the agenda, and that is that this teleconference meeting is authorized pursuant to section 50-14-1G of the Official Code of Georgia because of the public health state of emergency declared by Governor Kemp on March 14th, 2020, and most recently renewed as to restrictions on public meetings and because means have been afforded for the public to have simultaneous access to this teleconference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have in front of you an agenda. Please take a moment to review it. Let me know if you have any additions or corrections. And otherwise, I await a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the uh, agenda as outlined today. Uh, All right. Do I have a second? Second. It's been second. Pro properly moved and seconded to approve our agenda as presented this date. All in favor say aye. I raise your hand and opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, we have our agenda. We have approved it. Item number two on the agenda is communications and responses from the public. Ms. Bodison, do we have any members of the public wishing to be heard? Good morning, Madam Chair. I have six attendees at this time and three wishing to make comments. Eileen Nakamura, mm -hmm. Maggie Goldman, and Mary Barron, a Baron. All right, so we actually have three persons wishing to make statements and we will start, that being so, with um, Eileen Nakamura. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Right. I'd like to be a little bit louder, but we can hear you. Okay, good morning. I'm Eileen Nakamura from Sandy Springs. As we all know, 2020 was an incredibly tough year, especially for Fulton elections. You had minimal time to manage the implementation of an impossibly complex new voting system during a global pandemic, an extremely difficult task for a county whose population is larger than that of the six smallest states. Having poll watched at many Fulton locations in the last 15 months, I applaud this board and especially Director Barron and his staff for the improvements that have been made over that time. However, there's still much that could and needs to be improved. As a nonpartisan statewide poll watcher for the Coalition for Good Governance, on both November 3rd and January 5th, I spent many hours at each of seven Fulton polling locations. And I feel that the difference in the proficiency and efficiency between poll workers at each location is concerning. In other words, there are amazing poll watchers, I mean, poll managers who should be training others, and there are those who need a lot more training. These differences stem not just from inadequate training, but the fact that there is no conduit to share the wealth of knowledge and experience of exemplary poll managers with those who are less experienced. In the last year, I've come to know some poll workers very well, and they all have one complaint in common about Fulton elections, that their concerns, comments, and especially suggestions seem to fall on deaf ears most of the time. In fact, that complaint can be echoed in these public comments that some of us make every chance we get. Our comments are almost never addressed during the BRE meeting, and there is never any acknowledgement that our voices are heard afterwards. This must change. I urge you to quickly set up a serious undertaking to gather feedback from poll managers, poll workers, and even poll watchers after every election. Now is the time to set up a task force made up of election officers, poll workers and poll watchers to help improve the processes and procedures in Fulton County. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nakamura. Uh, Mr. Goman? Yes, Ms. Goman. Ms. Goman, I, I apologize. I find you here. Is it is it my turn? Somebody yes, just unmuted me. Yes. Okay. Ms. Maggie Goldman. Yes, yes. Um, 
So I just want to make sure that we continue to do things that make it as easy and efficient to vote as possible in Fulton. I think we did a good job not having lines this year, and we should continue doing things that will help us not have lines, like having lots of locations available and lots of different options uh, for people to vote. And uh, I, I'm not really sure why all the poll workers have to work like a full day shift. Um, as a nursing mother, like I, I could not have possibly volunteered because I have to, you know, like pump or do something. I can't work an entire day. So now that we have more people interested in, in poll working, maybe we can work out some shifts or something. Um, it seems like really unreasonable to ask people to work all day. Um, so that would just something I personally could not overcome uh, to help this year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goldman. Uh, the next person is Ms. Beryl. Yes, ma'am. Mary Beryl, uh, unmute yourself, I'm sorry. please. I'm sorry, I was muted. It's Mary Barron. Barron, okay. Um, so I, I wanted to attend the meeting today to um, commend the board for the improvements to voting in our county that you've made since the, um, the runoff elections. I had a lot of friends who told me back in the spring and in, in June oh. that they waited for a long time um, in order to vote. And um, they were very frustrated with the election process. In contrast, the November and January elections were worlds apart. Many people I know were proudly sporting their stickers that said they voted from State Farm Arena and saying how easy it was to vote this time. In my case, my husband and I voted by absentee ballot in order to avoid exposure to the virus. And we used our local ballot drop box, which was really very convenient for us. I was relieved that I didn't have to use the US mail, which has been very unreliable, especially during the Christmas season, which I, I was worried that my ballot wouldn't arrive if I didn't have access to the ballot drop boxes. So I thought that was a great Improvement, and I commend you all for that. Um, I wanted to say that I hope that many of the improvements that Fulton County put in place to make our voting process in November easier will remain in place. I'm concerned that I'm hearing that some of these things might be eliminated in the future and uh, go away and make our voting process uh, inefficient and go back to having long lines again. Absentee ballot and the drop boxes, the mobile voting units you used, um, having additional polling places like State Farm Arena. Those were all great improvements. And I wanted to say, I hope that they will remain in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Barron. Uh, Ms. Bodison, has, is there anyone else who wishes to be heard who has signed up? No, Madam Chair. All right, thank you very much. That will conclude item number two on our agenda. Item number three is approval of minutes. We have many of them uh, for a special meeting December 1st, special meeting December 4th, regular meeting December 11th, special meeting December 22nd, and executive session meeting on December 22nd. Uh, we can take these all together. We can take them in order. What is the pleasure of the board? Madam Chair, I recommend that we uh, take the um, meetings all together here for approval. Uh, and in so doing that, let me make a statement that um, there are a few things that uh, I have uh, read and noticed uh, on these reports that uh, for the sake of not trying to engage in another agenda item here, uh, and also for the time, uh, I propose that I will send this information to you and the other board members here in the next few days. All right, so noted. Now, I, I heard you make a, um, Correct. A, a motion to approve. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. It has been properly moved and seconded that we will approve all meetings noted December 1st, December 4th, December 11th special meeting on December 22nd and executive session on December 22nd. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye and raise your hand as well. Aye. aye. 
All right. Um, let me see. Do we have, yes, we do have Ms. Neurid in. Um, uh, that is unanimous. Um, all opposed? Hearing none, it is unanimous. Thank you all. And thank you for, for um, moving us along, Mr. Wingate. Now we get to uh, a changed order, but certainly one of the important things of this particular meeting and that is certification of results of uh, state and federal runoffs. And I have in front of me uh, the summaries of election returns for three elections for, uh, that were held in Fulton County. One was for the US Senate seat presently occupied by David Perdue, one for the U.S. Senate seat, presently occupied by Ms. Kelly Leffler, and one for the Public Service Commission, District 4, um, presently occupied by Mr. Lauren Bubba McDonald, Jr. We can take these together. We can take them separately. Do I have any statement of the preference of the board? together madam chair i have uh, a motion i guess i'll call that a motion thank you to to take them all together uh do i have a second on that motion second thank you dr ruth all right having had that mr baron i have in in, in my chair. hand Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. To, Ms. Perkins call, Hooker, our attorney. You need to call a vote on the motion that was just moved in second. Thank you. You were the only person I didn't send the uh, <laughs> the guidance to. You're the only person who remembered. Uh, all in favor of that motion say aye and raise your hand, please. Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed, it is unanimous. Um, I'm sorry, I was trying to find the uh, the Mute camera time. button and I meant I. Thank you. So we've got that absolutely clear. All right. So Mr. Barrett, I have in my hand several things. One is the official and complete election summary report for the United States Senate seat presently occupied by David Perdue, the United States Senate seat presently occupied by Ms. Kelly Leffler and the Public Service Commission District 4 seat presently occupied by Mr. Bubba Smith. I also have in my hand 48 pages of the statement of votes cast in each precinct in Fulton County, Georgia for all three of these elections. Is it your testimony and certifications that this is a true, um, uh, a, a, a true cast of uh, a true statement of the votes cast for all three of these elections in Fulton County. Uh, yes, it is. All right. Um, now I will ask if there is any uh, discussion by any of the board members concerning any of these that you wish to raise. And I hear none. Having heard none and having a proper motion and second for these, all in favor say aye. Uh, and let us do this the way that we're supposed to do it uh, alphabetically. Cooney, aye. Um, Johnson? Madam Chairman. Chairman yes. <laughs> you Please. need to actually have a motion to approve, disapprove, certify, not certify. Thank you. Actually, you had a Thank motion you. to consider. I, I have to tell our attorney that I told our um, uh, our board members, I would need that, but I didn't tell you. I should have included you. Uh, okay. Do I have a motion to certify? I have, uh, Madam Chair, offer a motion to certify the elections. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I have a second from Ms. Nuridin, I think I just heard. Yes. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Cooney? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Nuridin? Aye. Ruth? Aye. Wingate? Aye. All opposed? 
we have the three uh, motions certified uh, for those three races. Thank you. Um, now that gets us to the monthly operations report for December. Mr. Barron. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, start with the elections division report. We had the December 1st, 2025th Congressional District and 39 State Senate District special runoff elections that we conducted. There were 44 precinct overlaps in that, that election with 146 participating polling locations. We actually had to use the mobile voting units that day because two, the water tested positive for Legionnaire's disease. So the mobile voting units have come in handy uh, on election day now in uh, two two back-to-back -back elections. We had advanced voting locations in the US Senate and Public Service Commission runoff, totaling 271,062 in-person votes cast in, during the 15 days that we were open. We had 34 sites, including our 30 regular sites, the two outreach sites at State Farm and Mercedes-Benz, and we also had two other sites with more capacity for check-in, one in the north at Dorothy Benson Senior Center, as well as the Gateway Center down in College Park. And in addition, we had the two mobile units. And I think I, I put, we put in the pack, board packet a map of all of the locations where the, the buses um, were stationed. We, we balanced them out um, via commissioner districts. We had the poll worker and poll technician training for the January 5th election in December. We have also acquired or uh, we have, we're leasing a second warehouse in Hayville to supplement the EPC. And we used the GWCC space this time for logic and accuracy testing as well. We are, for poll manager supply pickup and check-in, we are developing a um, web EOC uh, application. But we're, what we're also gonna do that isn't on here is we're purchasing a inventory tracking system that should, we should get one within the next um, month or two to implement that this year to better track all of our uh, supplies and equipment. Uh, the mobile voting units, we actually ended up purchasing some Wi-Fi systems for those instead of using the hotspots because in different parts of the county, the hotspot reliability is spotty. And those were installed during early voting uh, in the December election. We're moving on to voter registration. You can see that we, we processed or we received 322,685 applications this year and we we have as of january 1st we had 821,320 active voters 38,016 inactive voters and we received 26,889 voter registration applications in december and we are processing those um, now the with regard to, we mailed out uh, felons, we mailed out 746 letters to voters who are suspected felons. If they do not respond, they will be removed from the voting rolls. Uh, one, another thing that we did was we sent the board a, a in the board packet, um, list maintenance, how often list maintenance is done and the different types of list maintenance that we do. That will go along with the workload statistics. And we issued 130 TVIX. This time we have 13, 15 permanent employees. We have one vacancy that we'll be filling next week. Uh, and on the 19th, that is our last day for all of our supplemental staff. Uh, both, both of our call centers, one of them is already closed down. The second one, um, the actually the the phones have been turned off, but they'll be here through Tuesday. And those call centers really helped us throughout um, throughout this election year, 
being able to have those staff it, it allowed for the, the permanent staff to have more time to do their work as we employed those call centers. The admin division, um, they've been prepared the election budgets for this year. Uh, they will also be helping. Uh, we are going to have a meeting with, set up a meeting with the city clerks next month to give them an idea of how much it is going to cost with this new voting system to conduct elections. And we, because we have to let them know that it is more expensive to, to administer elections with this new system. And so there will be increased costs for all the municipalities. We received uh, three grants this time. Southern Poverty Law Center helped to pay for absentee ballot drop boxes and including uh, one in Chattahoochee Hills where it also helped Chattahoochee Hills install a the security camera to monitor that that location. Um, we with the 20 with those expenditures we are processing a refund to Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, I sent you this morning an updated grant expenditure spreadsheet for the first grant we received from the Center for Tech and Civic Life which was for 6.3 million dollars and we'll continue to update that and update you on the January election expenditures that will be coming from the four point, the second grant to $4.3 million. Those grants helped a lot uh, to pay for COVID stipends for poll workers. That was one of the biggest expenses out, out of those grants. And it enabled us to, to retain poll workers and uh, pay them to be out in the field during the pandemic. Uh, campaign contributions were due on December 31st. They have a grace period, they had a grace period of January 8th and reminders were emailed to all public officials. Uh, there were several candidates that filed their campaign termination report and that was also due on the 31st. Uh, we will be having, um, we have filled, we have several positions that are open that, um, one, the deputy director position is a new funded position, which will be posted uh, soon. The voter education and outreach specialist position is a new one that will be funded soon. We have funded, there, we have a new position for election systems assistant supervisor. That person was already selected and um, begins actually next Wednesday would be his first day. Uh, election officer position, we are, that position is still posted and out there. We have filled two other um, positions and one person needs to be notified on that one and the other person was already selected. And that is uh, it for the operations report. But I just, I did want to point out that we did put some maps in the packet of where we stationed the buses all of our early voting locations for both, and also uh, the, all the Dropbox locations throughout the county. And that's it. All right, thank you, Mr. Barron. Are there any questions or comments from board members concerning the uh, monthly operations report? And uh, Dr. Ruth. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Barron. Um, and also thank you for providing this list of maintenance procedures uh, around the voter registration. Um, that, that This is very helpful. Can you talk a little bit about the different types of databases that the department is using around um, matching of voter? Matching. Yeah, so you're, so you talk about the different databases oh. like you're using vital records you're you're also matching the um list against other databases to ensure accuracy can you talk a little bit about the other databases i see vital records is there are there others that you're using well yeah um and ralph can probably get more in depth in this but we do when when a voter registration application comes in it is compared 
through uh, Social Security. They, they do, uh, uh, it's processed and then it goes into a pending status. And then the Secretary of State's office runs it through a couple different databases at night to verify that that, that person uh, is eligible for registration. And it, Social Security is used and so is DDS, both of those. And that's okay. a state function to verify those once we enter them. Do you have anything to add to that, Ralph? Um, yes. Also, um, with the list maintenance, um, the voter file is banked up against the um, vital records and also um, Department of Corrections okay. so that they also can be um, identified um, to make sure that everybody is a viable um, registrant. And so when when is a voter flagged and removed? Okay. Does that if, happen within our department or is that at the SOS level? Oh, okay. And both of them is different. Um, at the felon level, um, what happened is that a voter is flagged and then a letter is generated and sent out to him. If they don't respond within 30 days, um, then he is removed. Um, or for the vital records, if it is what we call a type match, which is um, name, date of birth, social, um, if everything matches on that record, the Secretary of State actually removes them for us. Um, if if, for example, they did not give us their last four digits of the social, only gave us the driver's license, uh, we will go in and verify it. And once we come to the conclusion that it is the same person, we will remove him immediately from vital records. So that's how it is. It, it depends on the timing of it um, based on what reason it's going to be rejected. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Meredith. Okay, Mr. Jones, you said that the state removes um, voters from Fulton County's role. How are you informed in, of that? And then how is this board informed of that? Yeah. Um, well, the want that the state remove a vital records. Um, and we're informed, we have a list maintenance um, that actually we can pull to tell us everybody who has left Fulton County. The way we notify the board is through the monthly operations report. We don't give you the details of it, but we give you the number of people on the operations report of how many people were removed because of vital records. Is that, that on your report today, sir? Yes, it should be on the report today. Good, good. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Barron, I had a question. I, I see that you return funds back to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Can you talk a little bit about why? Well, when we, um, we purchased enough uh, drop boxes, the county had already put up funds and they awarded us uh, money to purchase more. And they, we ended up purchasing 20 plus uh, camera systems for a camera system and storage system for Chattahoochee Hill. So they had given us a certain amount of money and we already have 38 in place and we have nowhere else to, to add those. Uh, we, at this point, the, the grant is going to expire and we didn't have need for the full amount. Okay, I know that grant was part of a larger grant. I just I was wondering why that was those funds were singled out and returned. Well, we um, and and I think if we if we could, you know, if we had more more locations to where we could uh, which we could put place drop boxes, we would definitely add them. I mean, I think if the legislature were to add add locate add areas where we can place them like say quasi-government like if we could stick them at marta stations or 
some other locations. We're just restricted where we can put them. And we uh, essentially saturated the Fulton County facilities where we can, where we can place those. Um, some other cities had expressed interest in drop boxes, but once they, they didn't want to go through the, um, they didn't want to go through purchasing um, me memory and cameras and have to monitor those all the time. So a, a two cities chose not to do it. Great. Thank you so much. Lastly, how many full-time employees are in your department? We have 34. Uh, well, now we will have, we have 34. Um, we have one vacant position. And then with the newly funded position, uh, we'll go up to 38. I remember um, we asked the Board of Commissioners to uh, hire 10 additional staff a couple of years ago. Maybe that was 2019. Was That would have taken us over 30 then, right? Yeah. So, uh, at that time, we we did a, like a survey of other counties of like size around the country, and they ranged anywhere from 25 to 50 50 employees for counties our size. Um, they it seems like we're the exact same size, even with all the additional staff and those that you are proposing to hire as before that those 10 hires. And I was just wondering, is it because they moved, got promoted, or? The, the, the people that we hired? Right. Yeah, we, well, we increased the staff from 21 to 34. Uh, in 2019, 21, 20, yeah, we had 21, and then we we um, we bumped it up to 34. I think when I first arrived, we were at 18 staff. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any further discussions, Mr. Wingate? Next. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Bernetta, for your comments. Uh, the report indicates here under uh, personnel and staffing on page six, uh, there's a total of 15 permanent employees and three managers currently. That's in voter registration. Is, is not included. That uh, Ralph put that in his report um, for just to list the permanent staff in his, in his section. Um, so three of the 15 permanent employees um, are our managers. Actually, there, and then we're, we're going to be offering somebody a position. So we'll have 16 permanent employees once that position is filled. Uh, one, la one last quick question. Uh, it, it's uh, stated here that the total number of voter registration applications in 2020 was 322,685. Uh -huh. uh, what is or was the net new registered voters out of that number? It says 124,654. Great, thank you. All right, Mr. Johnson. Uh, I just have a quick question. One of the things that I've been getting a lot of comments about, and I don't and I brought it up to you. I wish you, if you could talk about it just for a second. And I know we've already certified the elections, but just for uh, some residents to uh, know where we are, this, uh, there's a, I don't know the exact word to use, but there's some uh, talk around the state about one of the PSC candidates not actually being on the ballot, one of the absentee by, on the early absentee by mail ballots. I do know that there was a time where it was a question if the PSC was gonna be on December 1st, it got moved to January 5th um, and all of that. But is there any more information or anything that you think people should do if they believe that, or if they contend that um, one of the PSC uh, candidates or the entire PSC race was not on their ballot? Well, when we, we proofed all of the, the different ballot styles that were, and, and did, did it by precinct. So uh, the only way that that race isn't on a ballot is if it's an overseas permanent resident. And that 
So they they just get the federal races. But if they if if they are not an overseas permanent resident, everyone would get the same the same ballot was distributed throughout the county, uh, other than it being differentiated by precinct. So it's the way the ballots are sent out. Once once you once you proof a ballot and it's set, those those three races are on every ballot throughout the county. And there's only a certain small segment of people that wouldn't that would only get a federal race. Have the has the office directly gotten any calls from anyone saying that that wasn't on their ballot? Only the inquiry that you sent. And okay. uh, he was, I think I think Ralph was going to respond to you on that. To try to get the name of the individual to be. I think. Yeah, I'm trying to get the precinct for that. Um, I was asked to ask them for the precinct, which they haven't responded yet. But okay, I'll get whatever information needed just to make sure. Okay. But that's, thank you. All right. Uh, does that conclude questions and comments for the monthly operations report? And hearing nothing further, then let us move on to new business. There are two items of new business and I would have to add at least three others, three items total, uh, one of which will be a personnel matter for executive session, but those can be grouped under the, um, uh, the topic of end of year, beginning of year business. Last year, good news and bad news, the good news was that we actually completed our end of year, beginning of year business, which included a review of bylaws and also um, objectives for the coming year and also uh, the uh, yearly evaluation of our elections director. Uh, the bad news was that we completely missed all of the COVID and um, uh, needing and and uh, uh, water leaks and all kinds of other things that we were confronted with uh, during the year. And now I understand why it's seldom that we hit the mark of January. However, I would like to get on with all of these all three areas that I see, and we can have other areas offered um, for this board's review and, and adoption of what needs to be done during the coming year. The first of these is simply an announcement and a distribution to board members of our bylaws. Our bylaws are our rules for ourselves. And uh, mostly, but absolutely doesn't have to be, it concerns how we conduct our meetings and how we conduct things like our uh, public comments. And uh, I have followed the Q&A for our public comments and I have listened. And uh, I, it is understandable, for example, that our observers would like questions answered during public comments. And there are reasons why we might not want to do that that I know very well. Um, one of which is that it seems like the correct answer is right there in front of us. But when we take a little time and give it to our staff to review and come back to us, it turns out not to be the right answer at all. And so not responding right at the meeting turns out to be a very good idea, but that is something that we can consider and change. So that is appended for the board's use. And my intention is to call for a resolution of this at our next meeting and in between to invite all board members to offer up changes that they would like to have that I will refer to our lawyers and then kind of collate, and then we will be able to make changes to our bylaws if we wish to do so. So that is open for um, your uh, question or discussion, but this is offered by me to have that discussion at our next meeting. It will be had in open meeting 
because it is not neither a personnel nor a litigation matter that is justified under the uh, open uh, meetings um, law. All right, unless anybody has anything to say, that is your work assignment if you choose to accept it. And then we move on to item number seven, which is offered by our Republican members, but uh, can be certainly supplemented by our Democratic members. Additionally, with an intention to have these actually resolved, if possible, at our February meeting. I understand that these are going to be explained to us and they will be explained by Dr. Ruth. Would you like to take this over? Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And I think we all can agree that this election cycle has been unprecedented. The department has been so resilient during these very challenging times. And we appreciate all that they have done to make our elections um, run smoothly. Um, but there are, there definitely have, are some improvements that need to be made. Um, there were improvements from in Fulton since June and the work doesn't stop. So we now need to examine the gaps that still remain in order to ensure security and integrity of the election process, as well as making the election process more transparent and rebuilding voter confidence. Dr. Ru oh, you, you hit your mute. You are yeah, now sorry about that. So, uh, Mark and I put together this uh, list based on feedback we've received from voters, from poll workers, observers, and based on knowledge as, you know, board members. And these are not part non, these are not partisan issues. They're nonpartisan. They're not ideological. Um, and so I'll just go through them. I will say that, uh, thank you, Ms. McNamara, for your comments earlier. I think that you will see as we walk through these points um, that our hope is that these improvements will not fall on deaf ears and that we will put them into action. So the first issue is building a logistical team to ensure more e effective delivery of poll location equipment and materials, including emergency and provisional ballot quantities. We've heard numerous reports um, about equipment being delayed, getting um, delayed at, at polling locations, not uh, poll workers, poll managers, not receiving all of their materials. And so we really need to build out a sufficient um, logistical team to ensure that materials and equipment are where they need to be on time. The second thing is examining the wait times throughout Fulton County polling locations. So we really need, we've done a good job. We developed the mobile app that shows the wait times, but we really need to build in efficiency, efficiencies to reduce wait times and offer these super voting opportunities throughout the county and not just in one section of the county. Third, we need to establish document, establish document and communicate and train on chain of custody procedures. And this includes ballot storage, bipartisan representation on pickup and delivery points, and ensuring that all poll workers are abiding by chain of custody procedures. It's so important that the chain of custody documents are written and um, accessible and include ballot storage, uh, again, and the bipartisan present representation on pickup and delivery. And then number four is performing data maintenance on current registered voter lists. And um, I wanna, again, thank you, uh, Rick, for providing that information around the voter list and how ma maintenance is done. Uh, we really need to look at writing up the procedures, how the file is updated and scheduling of updated updated voter list. You know, just a reminder, Fulton is a very complex county. We have over 800,000 voters. And it's important that we compare our registration, registration <laughs> records by employing more sophisticated data matching techniques and modernizing our, our processes. 
And then number five, review the signature verification process. I ran across, there's a 2020 cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency risk assessment that I think would be very helpful for us to, in assessing our absentee by mail uh, processes to identify gaps and identify better strategies to accurately manage uh, absentee by mail. You know, just because of COVID, we normalized a process that was meant for exception. And so we really need to focus on ensuring proper management of the absentee by mail process. And again, as it relates to absentee ballots and number six, reviewing and uplift, uplifting the delivery and reporting process to ensure that there is proper delivery. I know we've heard of a number of Republicans and also Democrats. We heard from Tyler Perry that he was he did not receive his absentee uh, ballot. And so it's really important that the voters can trust that they will, if they request a ballot, that they will receive a ballot and receive it in a timely manner. Uh, the next item has to do with de-escalating partisan poll observation. Um, there were a number of reports uh, from many Republican observers and poll watchers not feeling welcome, not being allowed in or given uh, less advantage than their counterparts. And so we really need to ensure that all poll managers and poll workers uphold the law and allow all poll watchers and observers their legal right to review the election process. And that includes in uh, viewing that process from the beginning to the close of election activities. It also will be important in the training to add uh, to poll managers training deep escalation skills to help avoid tense situations, keep stress low and make the environment more calm. Then we also need to look at providing operational division between registration management and the absentee ballot division. Um, the absentee ballot volume has increased exponentially and we really need to make sure that it's fully staffed, um, staffed adequately. And then explore ways that we that the department can more, be more responsive to requests for information and specific action requests from elected um, and party officials. Um, there are a number of requests that uh, were received from commissioners, Houseman and Ellis, and also from um, Fulton County GOP Chair Trey Kelly. And so I think it, it really is, and we feel like it, it is very important to make sure that um, we are responsive to those requests. And then distributing the newly acquired mobile voting units throughout all parts of the county. I think the mobile units have been very valuable and it's important to see their value throughout all of Fulton. And so figuring out a way that um, the mobile units can be equally distributed. Um, and then Finally, conducting a technical performance assessment of the electronic voting platform um, to determine any bugs, review technical performance related complaints, complaints throughout the county. I know there were a number of reports uh, concerning whether or not some voters uh, questioning whether or not when they scanned their ballot through the scanner, whether or not, whether or not not it counted. Um, some, sometimes they didn't see uh, a green light or didn't see where uh, a notification that the ballot was accepted. So that concludes, I wanted to, Mark, please chime in and if there are any comments, but I think now is the time to concentrate on addressing these vulnerabilities and, and these concerns and moving Fulton into the 21st century. Uh, thank, uh, Kathleen, thank you uh, for that. Uh, very well done. Um, let me just add to this just briefly that um, I think Kathleen and I'll hit uh, go a little further is that this is not certainly the objective was not to uh, uh, take some kind of a partisan view on this. Uh, obviously, the way in which this board is made up by direction of the state legislature and how it's appointed. 
uh, Kathleen and I happen just to be the Republican representatives of this. So yes, we hear from Republicans primarily. Um, the takeaway I think from this is, is that we all realize, and uh, uh, certainly with regards to the department itself, some of these are legislative matters that only the legislature you know, can address. And if they see fit and by their own commonality determine to make changes to how certain regulatory and lawful issues are concerning our elections, that's up to them. Uh, I just believe that Fulton, and again, uh, an overused term, but yes, we continue to be the largest county in this state. Uh, typically, all eyes are on us. Uh, we clearly uh, did a tremendous uplift in the job performance from that that we were confronted with with very little time for the June primaries leading up to the general election. Uh, certainly, uh, there are some of these areas where I think through a little bit better defined uh, definition of process, documentation of process, delivery of process, and most importantly, periodic audits and review of those processes. And my belief is, is that that is not necessarily uh, uh, under the direction or uh, observation of the Secretary of State. You know, I mean, they're operating, you know, in their environment, which is the lawful environment, making sure that, you know, the counties are following along. But I think going forward and not to be looking backwards at all, but going forward, there are uh, several of these components that we just need to focus on and make sure as we go that the refinement, the proceduralization, the things that matter, and then reviewing our results are measured. And I think the board, any board would have to take that responsibility to ensure that that is being done. Um, I think that um, in looking at this, quite frankly, and I've spent, which is an inordinate amount of time trying to look at a lot of this process myself, and I know it's, 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 it, it can get extremely detailed, and there's a lot of variations to this, but I think proceduralizing and agreeing to that procedure is going to be extremely helpful. Um, I think that, you know, this uh, the so-called list maintenance component of this is extremely important. Uh, it gets back to the point that I've made now for several months is, is that our job here is the best that we can is to try to prevent, you know, one legal vote being negated by an illegal vote. I don't believe, and I have looked at this as deep as I possibly can, I don't believe there's any underlying massive amounts of fraud. However, as has been stated by many others, a lot more learned than I, there is clearly fraud in an election. So best we can do is just try to put, again, these procedures, practices, reviews, audits in place so that we can look at our constituencies and give them a fairly uh, 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 deep feeling, uh, sincere response that this is all being done accordingly. Not saying that it isn't, but just saying that the more that we have, the more that we can explain, I think the better off we are um, uh, for everybody concerned. Uh, the board just being one, obviously one rather minor component of that. But um, there, I, I think in, in compiling as we did, you know, these things at this level is uh, the observations that I think most practically will help to lead us all, you know, in that direction of having uh, as much uh, transparency as possible that can be done on this. And coming back just to take a look at what we do ourselves is very important, including, and again, to, 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 to kind of finalize and sum this up, is that I would again heavily recommend that after a major election that we take and, and bring in however you might want to do it, certain poll workers, poll, excuse me, not poll workers, but the poll managers 
and do a debrief with them because they're on the ground. They're seeing the things throughout the election day that we should be looking at, which would report the very good things that are happening that turned out to be extremely well done, but then things where there could be through that discussion, some improvement to it. And all I'll submit to you is, is that I think that we would have a good selection, not every poll manager, but a good selection cross section of poll managers that come in, sit down or do a Zoom meeting, however you want to do it, but allow time for that feedback to be taken. And not that you take everything that's being stated as being something that you have to go rush to do, but in a cumulative uh, basis, sort that out and make a determination. Here are the very, very tangible things that can be done that would in fact elevate our process. And I don't think that would take too much to do. And I think again, then you have got some tangible reporting coming from those on the front line in these polls, working these polls and dealing with the voters um, that would be valuable. And some of the things that Kathleen has drawn out here too and what we put together, I think points that out. So if we allow them to talk, I think it would be beneficial. So with that, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Mark Wingate. Ms. Duridan. Good morning. And uh, I did want to say during the operations report that um, the election day was a tremendous success and um, with very little wait times all day long. And sometimes um, the good news doesn't make the news, but <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, so we had, um, I think we had a pretty strong election day. And I wanted to thank Director Barron and his staff for um, a smooth uh, election day. Um, having said that, and still stand by that, I do want to share uh, something. Uh, so on election day, about 7.15, I got a call from one of the local city council members saying that um, the poll, a poll wasn't open across the street from her house. And the poll was open and, that, and that's not a problem. The poll opened timely and closed timely and very little wait time there. I do want to say to Director Barron and his deputies that are listening that um, the response by the poll manager when Director Barron inquired about whether or not her poll was open was pretty, so what happened, the Kandesi poll is on the back of the school. And so we have these small signs, and excuse my voice, I've been coughing and I'm recovering from my illness, so uh, that's why I'm sounding this way. But um, the small, the vote here signs are plastic signs with these kind of really flimsy wooden posts. And um, I think when Rick reached out to the poll manager and said that voters went to, well, voters said that the poll was closed, you know, she kind of laughed and said that she had been there since five o'clock and that the poll opened timely, which is true. Um, I want to encourage Director Barron to uh, encourage his staff and his poll managers. To me, the correct answer would have been let me go outside and see if the poll, the sign fell down. Let me check to make sure that postage is clear and that people can see that the signs are pointing to the back of the school. Anything could have happened. But the response was kind of a giggle. We've been here since five and we're, you know, we've been processing votes since seven. And, you know, you know, we've gotten responses like that from to speak to Miss um, Aileen's point, Miss McNamara's point, McNamara's point is that, you know, we have some poll managers, you know, who are diligent, and that we have great poll workers throughout the county and who worked diligently. So I, I'm, I'm a true advocate and supporter of our polling staff, you know. But I did want to kind of mention that particular poll manager because that 
attitude is counterproductive. You know, so if a if three voters knock on a council person's door and say, hey, this poll isn't open because they're at the front door and there's not adequate signage, they don't see it, maybe it's off to the side. Um, I would like a poll manager to respond by saying, hey, let me go see if the sign fell down or maybe it's not up, or maybe let me put one on the main door of the poll of the school so people will know that they actually have to drive behind the school to vote. But the attitude was, ha ha, we've been here since five. That's just not true. And so I, I did want to just mention that because um, she did everything right. She opened, but I just think that her response there you know, and it's responses we get when we kind of ask questions of poll managers and we'll get a response, oh, they just said it wasn't true. And I have a poll or I have a voter who's saying, you know, this door is locked. I can't get in it because they're just at the wrong door. So I'm just, I just said all that to say that when we, when we do that training, that we remember that we have humans at every level from the voter to the poll manager, and that we have to be collaborative and supportive of one another. So I just wanted to share that. But I think election day, um, even if that poll went off without a hitch, those voters were in and out by by 7.30 when they were redirected to the correct door. And um, I just wanted to share, because we've gotten, you know, we've just gotten complaints. And then when we address them, we get answers like, well, the poll manager just said that wasn't true. And I'm sitting here talking to a voter and sometimes, you know, they just don't want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> you know, so thank you, that's it for me. And thank that's you. A great job on election day. Uh, is Mr. Johnson wishing to be heard? Absolutely. Then we welcome it. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Ruth and uh, Wynn Gates for uh, putting this together. And I am very excited about being able to dig deep down into um, each one of these things. I think sometimes when you um, when you make just you know one quick sentence, it gives us an opportunity to go uh, down into uh, drill down into each one of these. Um, obviously, being careful uh, to maintain as a board and not as uh, staff, but making sure that we do the right thing by the uh, the voters of Fulton County. I do want to say that I apologize because we were. I just had an opportunity to read this document. I had two meetings before this meeting. So I actually read the document uh, just before the meeting. So I was only able to make a couple of notes, but I do feel like we'll have an opportunity as a board to actually discuss each and every one of these. And um, you know I will have responses to all of the uh, points that are on here. Only a couple I disagree, not necessarily disagree with, but would like to talk about. There are quite a few that I agree 100%. And I will say that this document uh, I was all prepared to talk about another document uh, that we got that seemed, when we talked about nonpartisan, it just seemed a little more partisan. And this one seems uh, to be a lot more, uh, I would say, balanced. And I appreciate that. I also want to follow up with uh, our colleague, uh, Ms. Nuridin. I think that in all of this, the thing that is getting lost is the hard work that the election staff put in and the hard work and all the things that the election staff had to deal with during this election. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of accusations and innuendo even before the election started. So people were at their emotional highs and they were super sensitive. So you walk through a door and they say, you can't go through that door, you can go through that door. The only thing they heard is you can't go through this door. So they take it as an antagonistic uh, position from the poll worker when the poll worker is simply trying to let them know what they can and cannot do. But I think that our, uh, if you look at from June to January where Fulton County was as it related to the elections, no one can say that we did not drastically improve in every manner of the election. There are some things that we have to, I think, be very careful about when we use the word fraud, when we can use the term flawed. 
Um, and I say that because when you say fraud, it stirs up different emotions in people. Um, as we saw last week, the uh, disgusting display that we saw in Washington is a bunch of people that believe that it was um, our elections were fraud. When in actuality, there are certain aspects that are flawed. And there are things that we can work on, we can fix, we can um, all come together and say, hey, these are things that need to be taken care of and looked at. Um, so I do believe that, and I do believe that our staff has done everything they can. Now, obviously we all can do more. We can do more as a board. One of the things that was mentioned on here was responding to elected officials. Um, maybe I saw something different, but it seems like a lot of those uh, correspondents that were sent from elected officials and from party leaders were directed to us. So I know how to type. Everybody on this board knows how to type. We can easily uh, come up with a response, send it to the board and say, hey, this will be a good response for that. Uh, one of them was directed directly to a commissioner. So I think that as we look and we drill down into each and every one of these items, um, I think we'll see that they, and we may not even agree, I don't know, but I think that we can talk about ways that we can make things better, but at the same time, not lose the fact that this department has come a very long way. And it's not even the fault of the department. Who knew when uh, Rick was planning the 2020 elections that we were gonna have COVID-19. No one knew that. No one could have predicted all the things that were going to happen. Um, I can tell you there were a lot of people in 2019 that came to our, uh, as we speak about responding to uh, voters and responding to people in public comment, there are a lot of people that came to the podium in 2019 and talked about this voting system and did not think that this was the best voting system. I'm not in no way saying that it is not a good voting system, but we didn't do a lot of response to those people back then. They always said that we did not uh, respond to them. So I'm glad that we want to now look at responding to people and making sure that we respond to everyone as they come. Um, so I look forward to uh, working with our counterparts um, on the other side, sort of, kind of, I, I think, I thought we were, I think we're all, uh, I know we're appointed by different people, but I hope we all have a bipartisan spirit in order to make sure, because all voters count. I wanna make sure that every voter, and one of the things that we were discussing, um, Mark mentioned that um, he hears a lot from Republicans. But one of the things that I do is I try to reach out to Republicans. I, um, I might get in trouble for saying this um, in public, but I actually sit down with uh, a Republican and had cigars and talked about this entire election process just to see uh, his perspective and understand some of the thought processes from where uh, Republicans are coming from. Obviously being a Democrat, um, I hear from Democrats all day long, but I reach out to Republicans to talk to them to say, hey, I know this is what you're hearing, it seems like this is what's coming. And yes, I admit, I watch Fox News sometimes just so I can get an understanding of what the thought process is going to be. But um, I think that's the only way to make sure we do the right thing by all voters in Fulton County. And as long as we come with the spirit of making sure that we are in this to do what's best for the voters of Fulton County, and at the same time appreciating all of our Fulton County uh, staff, the ones that need to be picked up, we need to pick them up. The ones that uh, need a little extra push and help, we need to offer them an extra push and help. And I think Rick and his staff, uh, you know, Dwight, um, Ralph, Nadine, Sharon, everybody, that's exactly what they will do. So again, I look forward to going uh, to deep diving down into these. I do wanna make sure that we're using this document and not that other document, because I will admit, I had a lot to say about the day today about that other document that I got. But if we're going off of this one, uh, most of them, I, I, half of them, I think I agree with you. Some of them we need to discuss. And some of them, I think that if you look at it from a different perspective, you might have a different outcome on it. So um, looking forward to working with it.
Right. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, we welcome, you know, working together. This is a partnership. We welcome that. And mm -hmm. I do I do have Democrat friends. Just <laughs> want you to know, you know that. I noticed that one of your things that is uh, noted. I <laughs> didn't know one of them was Each making large uh I you know, I had it on my document to say that we were talking about uh making State Farm Arena convenient. And I was going to put you out there, Dr. Ruth. I know you voted at State Farm. I voted at State Farm. I enjoyed the yeah. experience I had at State Farm. Totally. So I know Republicans could use it. <laughs> yeah, and Republic and I, I and Republicans have have uh, voted there as well. So yeah. Okay. Uh, let me. I think reiterate to say that the two items under new business are two thirds of what I'm going to ask this board to engage in in the next month, and that is to review bylaws, which are the operatives, the obligations that we take upon ourselves. And it concerns in part how we, how we behave at meetings, but also other things. And I will invite uh, suggestions uh, and amendments for that. The uh, issues that were offered by Dr. Ruth, I will ask board members to respond to in writing so that we can organize them for our February meeting. Some of those I have already suspected we may have to set to the side because the General Assembly has indicated a great interest in taking action itself, but many, if not most of them, are issues offered by us to fulfill our obligations to the public as distinguished <coughs> from our um, uh, obligations amongst ourselves during meetings and other times. And then the third matter is we are going to get to in just a minute. And those are personnel, uh, the personnel that we hope are the best personnel to meet the expectations and legal rights of the public uh, voters. And if that is enough for you, for by way of explanation, let me go on to a couple of things before I ask that we go into executive session. One is a reminder that we have just certified three elections. And I understand that Ms. Bodison is going to get in touch with you or you may get in touch with her. We have to sign those um, those forms and we have to do so promptly. So let me remind you of that and then delegate that to Ms. Bodison. Um, we've received some public comments. Uh, I've already explained why we don't respond to public or at least one of two reasons why we don't respond to public comments during the public comment period. Um, but I am going to uh, refer those comments to somebody who may be able to answer them and respond. I trust that you will leave your um, uh, email addresses with Ms. Bodison so that those can be responded to. Then if that takes care of those matters, uh, there are uh, personnel matters that require discussion in executive session. Uh, do I have a motion um, to go into executive Madam Chair, I'm yes. going to executive session? I, I, if I can have a, a quick comment, Madam yes. Chair, I second Mr. Johnson's motion, but I do want to say, just for the record, that I don't agree that the that the attendees questions should not be addressed. We have the director and all the deputy chiefs, and if they are. If they, if they post questions at 10 on one, we should have at least some responses typed out by 1115. I don't think that's unreasonable. I, I do want to say that you speak for yourself when you say that you don't think that those questions should be addressed, that that is not the voice of at least me. I believe that our staff are more than capable and proven their capability of responding to simple questions in the past. And having said well, that, having there, said that, I second. There was the policy of the board, and the board, the board uh, repealed that. Gotcha. 
but that can be put right back in again. But I would I like to, to explain to you why we did it that way in our next session. Thank you. What Thank happened? Thank you, Mr. Johnson's motion. Okay, so we now have um, a motion and a second to go into this, uh, to executive session to discuss personnel matters. Um, I will call for a vote all in favor. Uh, and we have to, to do this um, this way. Cooney, aye. Uh, Johnson? Aye. Muradin? Aye. Ruth? Aye. Wingate? Aye. All opposed, uh, it is unanimous. Uh, let me tell our observers that we are going to go into executive session. We will return from executive session in case there are any votes to take and at least to um, adjourn the meeting. I am not expecting that we will do anything other than adjourn the meeting, but um, uh, you are welcome to stay and we will go back into uh, session. Uh, we are going to be staffed by our county attorney, um, Patrice Perkins Hooker. We will not be staffed by our elections director unless someone asks for that. Okay, um, so let us now go into executive session. And, and we have the link, correct? Right. There's I just looked it up. It was sent yesterday at uh, five, <laughs> looks like five, seven. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I had to find it myself. <laughs>
including myself, I saw muted. Okay. Um, I actually see Cooney, Ruth, we are all here. All right. Um, may I have a motion to Mr. Rico Dollar, do I have you? I'm getting ready to drop them. Um, okay. The backdrop as we speak. Okay. Wow, we're good. All right. Um, may I have a motion to conclude our executive session and move into regular session? So move. Okay. So second. move, Mr. Wingate, and a second, Ms. Nuridin. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion say aye. And I'm aye. going to ask this. Oh, got you got no, no, no. Cooney, aye. Johnson? Aye. Nuridin? Aye. Ruth? Aye. Wingate? Aye. aye. Okay. We have um, properly moved, seconded, and voted unanimously to move into regular session. Are there any other matters to come before this board? And hearing none, I will hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved by Mr. Move Wingate second. and seconded by Mr. Johnson. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Cooney, aye. Um, Johnson? Aye. Nuridin? Aye. Ruth? Aye. Wingate? Aye. Uh, we have unanimously voted to conclude the meeting. Thank you all very much. You have lots of homework. I hope to hear from you soon. And we'll hear from Mariska about signatures. Is that right? We're to meet. So much for, for reminding me. And I remind you, we do have a signature obligation. She's going to tell us about it privately. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Thank you.